Welcome everyone to our live on-orbit message from the crew of Axiom Space's AX2 mission, a four-person private astronaut crew that is just beginning their 10 days on orbit with eight planned days docked to the International Space Station. Here in just a few mi minutes, we will take you live inside the Dragon vehicle that is currently in orbit around the Earth on its way to the International Space Station. Earlier today at 5.37 p.m. Eastern, 2.37 p.m. Pacific, the AX2 crew, a mission dedicated to expanding access to low Earth orbit for all, lifted off aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft from historic launch complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm Duke Brady, a multimedia specialist at Axiom Space based out of Houston, Texas. And I'm Kate Tice, Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It's been an exciting day so far. Duke, thank you so much for being here with us. Now, the Axiom 2 crew has been in orbit for just over three hours now. And in that time, they have opened the nose cone, they have taken off or doffed their spacesuits, and they've checked in with our medical team. Dragon also has the phase burn, which is the first of five major burns required to raise Dragon's orbit and position it in, a, in <clears throat> excuse me, and position it for approach to International Space Station. Right, and the crew still has roughly 13 hours to go before docking with the ISS. And in a moment, we're hoping to hear directly from them about their first few hours in microgravity, and we really are eager to share that with you because they must just be. Over the moon, <laughs> almost literally over yes. the moon. While we wait for the crew to reach the best position for a clear signal from Dragon, let's take a moment to introduce them. The AX-2 mission commander is Axiom Space's director of human spaceflight and retired NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson. During her career with NASA, Peggy flew three long duration missions to the ISS and has more cumul cumulative time in space, 665 days, than any US astronaut and more than any woman in the world. She has conducted 10 spacewalks with over 60 hours to her credit and performed hundreds of research experiments on board the ISS. The pilot for AX2 is private astronaut John Schaffner, a STEAM education advocate, business pioneer, and lifelong space enthusiast. He's been a pilot since the age of 17 and participates in extreme sports from hang gliding to base jumping to high performance racing. John trained as the AX-1 backup pilot, and during this mission, plans to invest a lot of time in STEAM education activities aimed at empowering educators. And representing the Saudi Space Commission and serving as mission specialist, Ali al Karni is an Air Force captain in the Royal Saudi Air Force. Ali graduated with a Bachelor of Aerospace Science degree in 2013 from King Faisal Air Academy in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Having flown as a fighter pilot for 12 years, Ali was selected as an astronaut in 2020. Also representing the Saudi Space Commission and serving as a mission specialist, Rayana Barnawi has a master's degree in biomedical sciences from Al Faisal University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and a bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences from Otago University, Dunedin, New Zealand. She has been a research lab technician since 2013 in the stem cell and tissue re-engineering program at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. This mission is the accumulation of years of efforts by teams at Axiom Space to expand the opportunities of private citizens around the world to partake in meaningful science, research, and STEAM education-related activities in low Earth orbit. Missions like AX2 open the door for new countries around the world to pursue and participate in the benefits of human spaceflight. And for Axiom Space, each of our private astronaut missions are critical steps in the development of our Axiom Station, the world's first private space station, which is currently under construction. Though this is Commander Peggy Whitson's fourth mission to space, which is just incredible, <laughs> this is the first flight for the other three and very eager to see and hear from them in space. Now, as you might imagine, communicating with a spacecraft that is moving 17,500 miles per hour can be pretty tricky. Uh, if you've watched previous crew missions, you know we can only talk to the crew when they are flying over a designated ground station. The amount of time that we have connectivity with the crew varies depending on the location of the ground station and the position of the spacecraft on orbit. Now, for this particular
particular opportunity, we expect to have about seven minutes or so uh, in order to be able to hear from the crew. Um, so at this point in time, we're going to kind of just wait and see if they are able to join us. Um, at this moment in time, they are um, flying, they are approaching the western coast of the United States. In fact, whenever they, uh, as they are talking to, the, to us uh, live, they're actually going to be flying almost right over Los Angeles. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> They'll be just right there, right <laughs> above us. <laughs> Their current altitude is 301 and a half kilometers. Um, and of course, the whole point of, you know, why they even launched today is they are, they're going to the International Space Station. Uh, right now, they are basically chasing the station. They are uh, about 5,905 kilometers behind the station. So as we, now 5,904, so as we continue, that distance will, uh, will close in, that, that range will get smaller and smaller. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground, you are go for the on-orbit Crew Dragon flight status event. As a reminder, this Pass has approximately nine, that's niner minutes in it. Hey gang, this is Dragon Freedom up here with a new crew on board uh, at orbit. And I, I'm really excited about returning to space but even more excited about welcoming three new astronauts to space, plus Gigi's here with us in her little Axiom spacesuit. He, she's our zero-G indicator that we um, released after we made it to orbit. And uh, I wanted to have an opportunity to let my crew talk to you about some of their experiences and feelings about being in space, because it is so spectacular. Well, you know, it's it's pretty amazing. You know, the, to describe the feeling when the uh, second stage kicks the uh, dragon off into orbit, you you realize instantly you're you're weightless, and it just it's just an amazing feeling. And eventually, we crossed into daylight, and you got our first view of Earth, and it's right outside the window. I'll point it over right his shoulder here. I can't do that. Okay, there you go. Well, as I was looking down, I could see the first curvature of the Earth and see that for the first time, and it was such an amazing thing. I realized I was actually here, <laughs> and we all we were all busy. Uh, we were all pretty busy getting dressed and getting all of our gear out that we forgot to look out the window for a couple of minutes. <laughs> But it's an amazing feeling, uh, really enjoying it. We're going to have uh, an awesome experience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma lak alhamdul shukur, alhamdulillah, ala fursa, alhamdulillah, ala al-lahba tarikhiyya li n'aisha. Mahu bas ana n'aisha, ahna wa intu sawiyyatan. Astamta'na sarahatan bi al-itlaq, wa lam ta'akad innakum intu astamta'atu bil-mushahada. شكرا شكرا لكل من دعمنا شكرا لمن كل من وقف معنا وساعدنا شكرا لمن وصلنا لهذه المرحلة شكرا لسمو سيدي خادم الحربين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز شكرا لولي عهده الأمير محمد بن سلمان على هذا الدعم والتمكين والثقة فينا كشباب طموحين برغبة بلحفة بأن أن أن نحقق المستحيل بإذن الله مع دعمكم وتوفيقكم أهلي على في الفضاء الحلم تحقق اللهم لك الحمد والشكر وقريبا إن شاء الله في المستقبل القريب الكثير سوف ينضم لنا إن شاء الله ونراكم قريبا من محطة الفضاء so this moment is historic, not just for me, but for every Saudi, and I have done it without the support, the love, the trust, 
from all of you guys. I, I extend my gratitude to our king, uh, King Salman and his crown prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, for their un, uh, never-ending empowerment and, and, and support and trust that every Saudi should be proud of. Uh, as I look outside uh, into space, it, it, I can't help but think this is just the beginning of a great journey for all of us. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy it with us and, and dream big because uh, we're going to uh, get somewhere uh, in the future, inshallah. And uh, just uh, to wrap up, this is, this is just the beginning, and I hope many of you uh, will join us soon. Assalamu alaikum wa al-fada. والله شرف مرة مرة كبير أن نكون نحن في هذه الرحلة التاريخية زي ما تشوفونا نطفو يعني ونحاول نثبت نفسنا لكن فعلا أحب أبدأ الشكر بقيادتنا وصاحب الرؤية ولي عهدنا محمد بن سلمان على دعمه لهذه المهمة شكرا للهيئة السعودية للفضاء شكرا آكسيوم شكرا سبيساكس شكرا ناسا وكالات الفضاء اليابانية والأوروبية كلهم على تدريبهم لنا طبعا شكرا لستو لعائلاتي الجميلة وأصحابي ورواد الفضاء السعوديين علي الغامدي ومريم فردوس على دعمهم في هذه الرحلة لأبناء الوطن الغالي نحن الآن في عصر التمكين والازدهار بفضل الله ثم قيادتنا الحمد لله نحن الآن وصلنا عنان السماء فكل اللي نحتاج نسويه إنه نحلم بإذن الله ونشتغل على أحلامنا وبإذن الله رح نوصل Hello from outer space It feels amazing to be viewing earth from this capsule um, we are here feeling microgravity um, thanks to our Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the leaders, King Salman and the visionary Crown Prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, for their support of, uh, in this mission. Thanks to all SSC and whoever worked with them, Axiom, SpaceX, NASA, JAXA, ESA, all the trainers. Uh, special thanks goes to sit to my grandmothers, and to my awesome family and friends, um, I would like to also thank Maryam Ferdos and Ali Al-Ghamdi for their support during this mission. And to the people around the world, well, the future is very bright. And I would like you to dream big, believe in yourselves, and believe in humanity. Well said, everyone. Thank you so much for all your support in getting us here. Wow, what a fantastic and powerful view into this adventure for three space rookies and a space veteran. How amazing is that? Yeah, obviously the three rookies, well now not rookies because they are in space. Um, you know, that's such an incredible first moment. We heard John Schaffner talk about it a little bit uh, when the Dragon separated from the second stage or when and really when that MVAC engine shut down um, and they felt that microgravity, it's pretty awesome. But to also see, you know, such a... Uh, a space legend like like Peggy Whitson to also be so excited is I, I'm just I'm so excited for this mission because we're just going to keep seeing that from her. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there you have it. A live on orbit message from the AX2 crew headed to the International Space Station. As Peggy, John, Ali and Rayana continue their journey, we will turn our attention to all that comes next with docking to the ISS scheduled for approximately 930 a.m. Eastern Time, 630 a.m. Pacific Time tomorrow morning. So we're going to end our coverage here for now, but be sure to tune back in for our live docking coverage with NASA starting at 7.30 a.m. Eastern, 4.30 a.m. Pacific, and that will be on AxiomSpace.com, SpaceX.com, and NASA Television. In the meantime, please check out our social media accounts for updates. As always, thanks for joining us uh, for this live on-orbit event, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning, bright and early, <laughs> for AX2's arrival to the International Space Station.